Okay guys, welcome back to part three of the series where we're going to put together the electronics package for the case sorter. So we're basically looking at all the parts that are that I'm using for this project. We have two TB6600s. I think I bought these in a four pack. I'm not, I don't remember the brand. Um, but generally here, what we're doing is we're setting them up, setting them up like this where um, they're set for 32 micro steps and one and a half amps. And you can see that information here. For two of those, we have stepper motor cables. I bought those in a big pack, nothing special there. A couple M4 screws and an M3 screw. There's actually four M4s and, and uh, I already put two of them into the chassis here. Then I have a 12 volt connector. Again, you can buy bags of these. I think a bag like this, which I've used several, was five bucks. Um, uh, on off switch, it's our power button. And a USB splitter. This is so I can have one USB cable going to the computer instead of um, having to have two. So one goes to the Arduino and, and one goes to the camera. In this case, they both plug in here and then I only have one going to the computer. A bunch of wires and then we have the Arduino Nano here. I already soldered this one up, but generally they'll come like this and they'll come with the pin headers um, or you can use your own if you get a big, you, know, you can buy a bag of these pretty cheap too. This one actually comes with all the pins you needed. Um, already has the USB port. And it's small. So in this particular package, I have it set where you can drop it in and throw a screw in that single hole. Get it to focus here. Come on. And that kind of locks everything in place. So how this will go together is we have the two holes for our power and our our, our power switch and our 12 port connector. And then we'll have uh, the TB 6600s on either side with the heat sinks facing out. And our Arduino Nano in the slot. And then the feed cable, I'll feed it out that hole or the, the, the USB port cable will come out of this hole to the computer. So I haven't spent a lot of time, obviously, working on cleaning this chassis up. This is just sort of a project chassis at this point, but I'll get around to it some at some point. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is just wire up the connectors. This is pretty straightforward. It requires a little bit of soldering, which is, if you've seen my previous videos, I'm not great at. Uh, we'll have the power coming in here 12 volt pin on the center, ground outside. The 12 volt will go directly to the switch and then from the switch will connect to the TB6600. So we'll just leave the wires for now. Uh, so let's go ahead and solder that up real quick. Okay, so I've wired up the switch and these are gonna go into the chassis at which point I can connect um, the center to the input connector. So I'll do that next. Okay, so this is where we're at. And I could not find the nut for that, but rather than delay the video, I wanted to finish it. We can, I can always come back and put a, a nut on that one. So what I will do is put the other screw in. There's a Another screw hole down here. And then what we'll be doing is running the power and ground up to these first two spots. So one of the nice features on these TB 6600s is that the connectors come off so that they're easier to wire up. So once you've got all your wiring done, you can just plug them back in as long as your wires are long enough. Okay, so because we are going to be sharing a lot of the 
um, power, the easiest thing to do is really to just run in parallel from ground to ground on the two controllers and run a wire from here to here on the second TB6600. We're also going to be running a five volt connection to three ports here on all the uh, enable plus, dir plus, and pull plus. So we'll be running five volts in parallel to all of those and on both. So really we can run a five volt connection to any one of these and then just put kind of jumper them across and same thing on the other side. So we only have one five volt wire plugging into the um, Arduino Nano. This is what I end up with on the connector. As you can see, I've, yellow is going to be my five volt and then it's bridged over really it's every other. And then I have three other wires. So I have an enable wire for the motor, um, a pulse, and then a direction. These all have the female connectors, which are going to end up connecting to the pins on the Arduino. So the next thing I'll do is really the same, same on the other side, except rather than have this, I'll just have a wire that connects into one of these slots so that they feed five volt across. We only need one of these going down to the Arduino. We have our second plug wired up. Same thing, we have them five volt bridged and I'm using the same wire colors just to keep track of stuff. So in this case, we would just need to run the five volt over to one of these five volt connectors here. And I'll just choose the last one. So now we're pretty much ready to drop our Uno in and then hook up the pins. So for the UNO, we're going to, that has a slot in there and they'll slide it in and then there's a hole to drop the screw in. Okay, once that screw is in, the Nano is very secure. Then we just have to do a little bit of wiring. So we, we do have a USB cable to fit in there. I'll do that towards the end, but it, it will just snap in. Ah, uh, what the heck, I can do it now. Okay, so we'll choose one of these sides to be our feed side and the other side to be our sort. So we'll just say this side's gonna be the feed side. So when we look at the sketch for Arduino, what we're looking for is port two to be the enable line. And so port two, it's really hard to see in there, but I'll, I'll get this other one so we can have a, so digital two, that's our fifth port. And then from there we go up to 10. So in this case, I'm just going to count five pins over and drop it in. That's D2. Six, uh, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is our direction pin and nine is our pulse pin. We're not going to hook this up yet. Actually, we can. This pin will go on pin 10. 
our 5 volt line. And then we just need to do the same for the other side, uh, mapping to the pins that we've specified in the Arduino software. Okay, so uh, our enable in the software is pin four. Then we have our direction pin on pin five. So direction is blue. Pin five. And finally, we have our pulse pin on pin six. So the last thing we would have to do, well, a couple things. We're going to have our camera. We would feed in the USB cable from our camera. Now, lastly, we have to hook up the motor wires. So one end of these is, at least the wires that I bought are ready to go set up for um, the NEMA. There's a lot of videos out there for plugging in a stepper motor, stepper, <laughs> stepper motor. and uh, you should look at those. Really, you have to just to figure out the, the positive and negative for each coil and then hook those up to your A and B plus and minus. So for this particular setup, and the way the wires are for my motors, um, we have black and blue as the, so every other really, if we're looking at this wire. So black and blue are one coil and red and green are the other. And so we actually have black as the, um, a, plus and green as the A minus or sorry blue as the A minus and then red is the B plus and green is the B minus that's what the setup is for these cables and these motors but there's there's a little bit of difference between the different cables and motors so you'll have to look that up for whatever motors and cables you have. But we plug these into these ports, into your motors on both sides. You know, I think we chose this, this guy as the feed motor. So obviously you wanna make sure that's connected to the feed and then this one to the, the sorter. The USB hub I'm using is one I got off of Amazon. And my general idea for this, I haven't tried this hub, so hopefully it works, but was that I would feed this through and then plug in my camera and my Arduino. and do some cable management. But um, this would uh, end up coming, plugging into the computer, and then there would be another USB port that comes out for the camera. I guess you could put a whole cover over this or um, build a better design, which is probably the better option here. Okay guys, so in post-editing, <clears throat> I realized that I had you guys putting, uh, hooking the five volt to, to D10. That's fine if you you set the Arduino to write out to, to D10, um, you'll get five volts. But, you know, in thinking about it, it's, <laughs> there was no good reason not to just use the uh, five volt output here to feed those, um, well, in my case, the yellow wires, those uh, pulse and dire uh, direction and enable five volts. So up to you. Um, I'm going to switch this to use, I'm going to switch mine 
to use the five volt pin rather than uh, right out on, a, on the D10 pin. Okay, I wanted to cover a couple other things. So I have everything, I have the uh, feed motor hooked up now. As you can see the wires are there and it's hooked up to my existing sorter. Um, as far as testing goes, in our Arduino, once you've pushed the code to your Arduino <clears throat> using the upload functionality, you can then open uh, from the tools menu, you can open the serial monitor. And from there, you can send messages to the Arduino to test. So in this case, if you just send the number one, um, what you should get back is a message called done. And if everything's working, your motor should move. Now, I didn't have this on, but let me go ahead and turn that on. And I will adjust the camera just so we can see what we're looking at. So you'll see I put a reference point, and this is more for tracking. As you're playing with the settings and speed, um, the voltage settings on the Arduino and the steps, you'll find certain levels you're going to lose tracking. You'll lose steps. Part of that's because the TB6600 is not really a great controller. Um, but sometimes it's, it's an issue with too much torque and you're just, the stepper motor is losing steps. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and, and just hit one um, in the serial monitor and hit enter. And then I can just hit enter from there on and make sure I'm not losing any steps. I noticed this machine, uh, when going uh, clockwise, seems to lose steps more than going counterclockwise from this orientation. So um, it could just be something in the track or something's binding when you go clockwise. But I'm going to up the speed just a little bit and we'll see um, how much difference you know, that actually makes. So we have a command we can send called feed speed and I'll set it to 30. It was at 15. Okay, it looks like it's still holding its tracking pretty well. So let's do a little bit higher. We'll go to 50. Okay, and let's go a little higher than that. And now you can see where we're starting to lose steps. So that's all I have. Um, part four of this will be covering the software installation or download and installation and configuration. Have a great day, guys.